Hey everyone! So I've been watching She-Hulk, Attorney at Law, the latest show from Marvel in the MCU on Disney+. And as I'm watching this show, it's occurring to me there's something very different happening here when you compare it to the Marvel TV shows and the Marvel movies that have come before. Well, okay, there's a lot of things that are different about this show compared to everything else, but there's one thing in particular that really stands out to me that the more it goes through the show, the more I'm realizing this could be something very significant and very big down the road. Now, first, let me back up a little bit and look at how the MCU has evolved over time. At the beginning, with Iron Man, The Incredible Hulk, Captain America, and Thor, the world was very similar to the world we have today. We had people just living their lives, superheroes weren't an actual thing, and yet then we all of a sudden had these heroes coming out using science to show up with superpowers. When Iron Man first put on his suit, it was incredible. It was a game changer for the world. When Bruce Banner and Captain America used science and experimentation to end up with powers, it was revolutionary. Nobody else had these. And when Thor showed up, a god from another realm to fight alongside them, and we had the first Avengers fighting aliens all of a sudden, the world was in shock. They didn't know how to respond to the sudden emergence of aliens. And all they had was this, was this group, this brand new group of heroes for the first time coming together to fight. Well, now we have She-Hulk, Attorney at Law, all these years later. And this show isn't just showing us a hero's journey. Everything else has shown a hero or multiple heroes going on some journey to advance themselves, to learn more about who they are, to figure out their powers, and to grow and evolve in some new way. Well, She-Hulk kind of has that. We have Jennifer Walters discovering she has powers and coming to terms with her character. But it doesn't stop there. More than this being a show about Jennifer Walters going through her journey to become and embrace the She-Hulk, we're getting a glimpse of the MCU as it stands today. And boy, have things changed. You see, before, there was the vast majority of the world were normal, everyday humans, and then we had this select group of individuals who had superpowers. That's not the case anymore. In She-Hulk, we're getting to see the world has changed. The number of people with amazing abilities and powers it's going crazy. They're showing up all over the place. Now, the first thing I want to show, to, to really show the, the progression of this, we should just look at the cases that were being shown in She-Hulk. We start off with Emil Blonsky, a.k.a. The Abomination. Now, this is a character that we've seen before. He showed up way back at the onset in The Incredible Hulk. We know how he got his powers. We know where they came from. We know who this character is. And we get to see a case revolving around him. Now from there, things start to shift. The next two cases. First, we see a light elf from New Asgard who has the ability to shapeshift. And we see a magician who's trying to do semi-street level magic, do a normal magic show, an illusion show, in a world where there are actual wizards. And this guy actually has some actual wizard powers, having been cast out of Camartage for doing some things that weren't really allowed. So he has a little bit of that magical ability. Now, the thing about these two characters, we've never seen them before. They're brand new to the show, and yet they're coming to us already having powers. It goes to show that there are individuals in this world who have powers, but just aren't significant enough to be a hero or a villain, and just are trying to live their lives and, and just do what they want to do while having superpowers. But the thing about those cases, it explains where those powers come from. The Light Elf comes from another place. 
She's an ambassador into New Asgard, and she has powers because she's a light elf. She's not human. And these are just powers that go along with who she is. So we have an explanation as to where those powers come from. And with the magician, Mr. Blaze, we know his powers came from some time training, about a week training in Camartage with the wizards. So we know where his powers come from. So we have two new characters with abilities that we've seen something similar before, and we know where the abilities came from. Then we shift once more. The next two cases we have, finally a case involving Titania, which we saw her back in episode one, but for the first time we have a case involving her. So we have Titania, and then we have Mr. Immortal. Now these two characters are even more significant and even more of a shift from the two that we had just seen. Titania has this incredible super strength. Mr. Immortal, apparently, can't die. Now these are incredible superpowers too, but what makes these two different than the two we've just seen previously? We don't know where their powers came from. The show doesn't tell us how Titania ended up with his super strength. The show doesn't tell us where Mr. Mr. Immortal gained the ability to live forever. So now we have the introduction of characters with abilities and no explanation. The thing is, in the comics, in the X-Men comics, that's kind of where things go there. Mutants show up because people are having abilities with no apparent explanation. Now we find out in the X-Men universe that evolution brought them to where they are. They evolved to have these new abilities. But from the point of view of the world around them, they're just showing up and suddenly the powers are there. Children have no abilities until a certain age, and then all of a sudden a power just shows up. It's just coming out of nowhere. No explanation apparent for these individuals seeing these powers appear. And that's what we're now seeing in She-Hulk. People are showing up with incredible powers and no explanation. And this is the first time this is happening in the MCU. Every time before, we've had an explanation either on screen or hinted at. But now we have people with powers and we're moving on. They have these amazing abilities, but we're not told where they got them. The thing is, this is a major shift. We know that Marvel has the rights to the X-Men and mutants and that they're coming at some point down the line. We've seen in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness that another universe has a Professor Xavier, which means they have an X-Men and it means they have mutants. We've seen in Miss Marvel that she has some genetic change, some mutation within her as well. And we get that cool little jingle that tells us this is an X-Men themed item. So we're getting these subtle introductions to the X-Men, but now the world itself in She-Hulk is being shown that things are happening, changes are happening, and the world will never be the same. Now we also see the Intelligentsia show up recently, and this shows even more the direction of mutants in the X-Men, because a major theme in the X-Men comics, in the X-Men world, is the idea that the world at large is not accepting mutants to just exist. They're running accountability, and in some cases, there's a lot of hate against mutants for what they are. And we're seeing now the intelligentsia showing up. This secret group online throwing hatred at people with powers. The introduction of this is showing the world is not just shifting to a world that is that could potentially hold mutants and people with powers with no explanation, but it's showing a world where that is starting to cause conflict. And we're starting to see the conflict between the normal everyday people and those who are gaining these abilities. And so She-Hulk, just may be laying the groundwork for a world where we can finally see mutants in the MCU. So what do you think? 
Does this make sense? Do you see this change happening in She-Hulk as well? Do you think it's going to continue progressing and lead us to the X-Men? Or at least to a world with mutants? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Let me know if there's anything I might have missed for or against this argument. And until next time, thanks for watching.